In America, everyone counts, and the 2020 census is how that great promise is kept. Respond today online, by phone, or by mail, and help inform hundreds of billions in funding for education, health programs, and more. Shape your future. Start at 2020census.gov. Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron, African American, held a news conference today uh, where he uh, discussed the lack of indictments, if you will, against the officers who killed Breonna Taylor. The special grand jury indicted one of the three police officers, and that, that was not because of murder. It, the warrant was issued for the arrest of Brett Hankinson. Bail was set at $15,000. The attorney general explained the charge against him in the case. With a thorough and complete knowledge of all evidence collected in this case, lawyers with our Office of Special Prosecutions presented the findings of our independent investigation before a grand jury comprised of Jefferson County residents beginning on Monday and concluding today. In Fletcher v. Graham, Kentucky Supreme Court said that the grand jury has competing but balanced functions. On the one hand, its purpose is to investigate allegations of criminal conduct and determine if there is probable cause to believe that a crime has been committed. On the other, the grand jury serves to protect the public against unfounded criminal prosecutions where probable cause is lacking. The grand jury is unique in our criminal justice system because it operates independent of the court and the prosecutor. The hallmark of the grand jury is its independence from outside influence. This independence is necessary to ensure that justice is done both for the victims and for the accused. After hearing the evidence from our team of prosecutors, the grand jury voted to return an indictment against Detective Hankinson for three counts of wanton endangerment for wantonly placing the three individuals in apartment three in danger of serious physical injury or death. The charge of wanton endangerment in the first degree is a class D felony. And if found guilty, the accused can serve up to five years for each count. Kentucky law states that a person is guilty of wanton endangerment in the first degree when under circumstances manifesting in strength indifference to the value of human life, he wantonly engages in conduct which creates a substantial danger of death or serious physical injury to another person. My office is prepared to prove these charges at trial. The grand jury found that Jonathan Mattingly and Miles Cosgrove, two of the three officers who fired their weapons, were justified in their actions. The investigation determined that they did, not, that they did announce themselves as police officers before the shooting. None of the three officers faced charges directly over Taylor's death. The governor of Kentucky, he is calling for the evidence to be released. Joining us now is Lori Daniels Favor, general counsel for the Center for Law and Social Justice. Cheryl Dorsey is a retired LAPD sar sergeant. Uh, and of course, our panel is Rena Shaw with the Lincoln Project, Women's Coalition, A. Scott Bolden, former chair of the National Bar Association Political Action Committee, Robert Patillo, executive director of the Rainbow Push Coalition's Peach Tree Street Project. Laura, I'm going to start with you. Um, and so people are shocked and stunned trying to understand how is only one officer uh, actually uh, charged in this case. The attorney general says they knocked on the door, but they had a no knock warrant. Um, we also know that the officers had body cameras, but the body cameras were not on. The AG did not explain how he arrived at the conclusion that they did indeed knock on the door. Who said so? Lori, go ahead. You know, I think this is one of those cases that really reminds us um, of the quote James Baldwin said that to be a Negro and to be relatively conscious in this country is to be in a state of almost constant rage. Because the reality is it doesn't line up. We know that there were numerous errors with the police reports, including the fact that they listed Brianna's uh, injuries as none. We know that there are witnesses who say that there was no announcement that the police officers were there. And we're really looking at a case or an outcome where the walls in the apartment that's 
separated Breonna Taylor's uh, apartment from that of her white neighbors, not the black neighbors who lived upstairs, literally got more justice than did Breonna Taylor and her family. And so that really is, it's in line with historical precedent as it pertains to the way that officers are enabled to take black lives. Frankly, how any uh, person who is white with a gun is frankly allowed to take black lives and will typically uh, be able to rely on the law um, to forgive that sin. Uh, and so the, the fact that there were no officers actually charged with her murder um, seems to rest on the case that they are asserting that they were responding with fire uh, to the shot that her boyfriend fired at them. And as a result, they were justified in doing so and that their actions were justified. <clears throat> Although I think the weight of the historical record would say otherwise. Um, Cheryl, uh, 18 fires, uh, shots were fired. Uh, six of them hit Breonna Taylor. Uh, the attorney general said the officers were justified because uh, they had been shot upon. But but at what point does uh, the boyfriend of Breonna Taylor, what rights does he have when you're sitting, you're in your apartment, she's laying in the bed, um, all of a sudden uh, you hear folks busting down the door, um, he's firing to protect himself and again, I, I guess I just sort of arrive at this whole notion, oh, yeah, well, they did indeed knock. And so, therefore, they should have been heard. And then the attorney general would also would not even say if he recommended charges, uh, which, of course, typically that's what DAs do. Well, we know that they have been dishonest in reporting on this from the very beginning. And so, uh, you know, when police kill us, there's only one version, and that's the one that they tell. Now we're hearing that somehow the boyfriend fired first and the officers were, according to the attorney general, justified in returning fire. And that's why they were not uh, charged, because there was no uh, unjustified use of force, according to the attorney general. And listen, he's complicit and has a symbiotic relationship with that agency. And he can present, as he said he did many times to the grand jury, a set of facts that would make them uh, align themselves with his thought process. And so while he's bothered and offended by celebrities and influencers who are speaking out on behalf of Breonna Taylor, I'm equally offended that he would assert he's a black man, he's skin folk not kinfolk, and therefore can somehow speak for all of us and, and say that this was a reasonable, but for uh, shots going through a neighbor's uh, apartment building, Hankison would not have even been charged. And so if that was okay, why then was he fired? And if it was a problem for the boyfriend to defend his girlfriend, Brianna Taylor, why then was he released without charges? It's all mucky, it's all offensive, and I call it BS. Uh, I am, um, I'm, I'm looking at, Lurie, I'm looking at this story, the Louisville Courier Journal, uh, where one of the uh, attorneys, Jan Waddle, said, it's possible, this is this writing, it's possible that, go, go to my iPad, please. It's possible that no case was ever presented against Mattingly or Cosgrove to the Jefferson County Grand Jury. Uh, he noted that Jefferson Circuit Judge Annie O'Connell announced only that Hankinson was indicted, not that a no true bill had been returned against the other two officers, which is customarily done when a grand jury decides not to charge potential defendants. Uh, one of the lawyers here says it's a simple, simple and important question. Were the grand jurors asked to consider charges, including the alleged justification against those two officers, or did the AG remove them from play on his own? Did the grand jury have the opportunity to decide whether the bullets rained upon Breonna Taylor, one of which killed her, were justified? Uh, and then this other law professor said, the absence of a no true bill suggests the grand jury never voted on whether to indict Mattingly and Cosgrove. Yeah, I think that's an astute uh, observation because the reality is the saying that you could indict a ham sandwich means something. And as noted by my colleague, the prosecutor in that case, the one who was in that courtroom, he or she leads the grand jury. They present their version of the facts. They present uh, what it is that they think needs to happen in this particular case. And so the, the notion that these other officers were not even, the, the legalities of their actions were not even voted on, um, sir, it does raise questions as to whether or not the grand 
grand jury was actually asked to consider those facts. And because we don't get no, and because everything else seems so murky, I think we are well within the purview of reasonability to question um, whether or not they were even asked to do so. The reality is, one of the quotes that we heard from, from Mr. Cameron was that there was no reason to believe that Hankinson's bullets were the bullets that killed Breonna Taylor. Well, well why not? Do we not know whose guns and bullets are connected? Are we not able to rule out uh, that he was the one who, who actually did cause her death? Were the other officers who shot, were their guns uh, and the bullets that were uh, that were ejected therefrom, were they evaluated? What was the evidence trail um, that leads us to believe that it's possible that Hankinson, that his gun was not the one that was uh, responsible for her death? So the fact that um, we are seeing charges against Hankinson for putting the lives of the white neighbors in apartment 3A in danger, but not even the grandmother and the black neighbors who were upstairs in danger, really begs the question, what was happening in that jury room and when they were deliberating and who and what angles and from what angles was the evidence actually being presented? Uh, Cheryl, really what this points to, and I think this this is the reality that people have to understand. Uh, you served for years with the LAPD. The reality is the law as it is written, uh, the laws in this country side significantly with police. It is extremely difficult to charge an officer for anything, definitely murder. Exactly, and particularly when you have an attorney general asserting that 16 bullets fired by Mattingly, and it's alleged that there was one report that spoke to the fatal bullet that killed Brianna coming from Mattingly's gun, but he fired 16 rounds, and 16 rounds in and of itself is an excessive use of force. Officers are taught and trained two rounds in rapid succession, and then you reassess whether or not a threat even exists. And so we understand, based on his own admission, the AG, that he said the officer's use of force, the 16 shots fired by Mattingly, the six shots fired by Cosgrove, were justified. And so there would be no reason to tell the jury anything other than that, or even present an opportunity for them to consider manslaughter or some other lesser charge, because in his mind, it was justified, and that was the way he skewed his presentation to the jury. All right, then. Um, Lori, Cheryl, we certainly appreciate it. Thank you so very much. All right, folks, back to our Hold Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. As our community comes together to support the fight against racial injustice, I want to take a second to talk about one thing we can do to ensure our voices are heard. Not tomorrow, but now. Have your voices heard in terms of what kind of future we want by taking the 2020 census today at 2020census.gov? Now, folks, let me help you out. The census is a count of everyone living in the country. It happens once every 10 years. It is mandated by the U.S. Constitution. The thing that's important is that the census informs funding, billions of dollars, how they are spent in our communities every single year. I grew up in Clinton Park in Houston, Texas, and we wanted, to, we wanted new parks and roads and a senior citizen center. Well, the census helps inform all of that and where funding goes. It also determines how many seats your state will get in the U.S. House of Representatives. Young black men and young children of color are historically undercounted which means a potential loss of funding for services that helps our community. Folks, we have the power to change that. We have the power to help determine where hundreds of billions in federal funding go each year for the next 10 years. Funding that can impact our community, our neighborhoods, and our families and friends. Folks, responses are 100% confidential and can't be shared with your landlord, law enforcement, or any government agency. So please take the 2020 census today. Shape your future. Start at 2020census.gov.